Hey YouTubers, there are tons of van life and Class B videos out there, and many times they kind of miss the mark on a reality check. So I took a bunch of my old videos and I'm going to talk over them about some reality. First, we'll start with what I'm working with, my Class B. From this end to this end, it's 19 and a half. From bottom to the top, it's about 9 feet 6 inches or so. Here we have propane. Here we have a shower. And it's the Onan. 2800 generator. These are the gray and black tanks and where you drain them. Battery bay is locked. And the storage is where the power goes. The water's in there. And then inside, a real bed. And under here, all kinds of storage. Here's my favorite part of this RV. You can lift that up, trap door, or you can take it out. You can put some pretty long things in there. And I got the tape. And it is 80 inches. A good place for the sewer hose to be stored. The width of the RV from this side over to this side is 80 inches. About 6 feet 8 inches. Hot water heater and that is the furnace. And this 99 Leisure Travel, this is the 360, the, the 5.9 liter V8. Let's now go inside and 75 inches we'll call it. Which is about 6 foot 3. An air ride system. I also have my generator start is right under there. Now if you get a class B, you get a kitchen and all the stuff that normal class B's get and in my model, you get fantastic storage. Sides are the same, but it's five feet of storage. Over five feet of storage, which is pretty friggin' awesome. I always say the most important thing you gotta do is find the right RV for you. It's not a one size fits all. It's uh, 78 inches, so that's 6'6". Six, six. So in my opinion, this is my most important and uh, necessary change that I made to the RV. But it was pretty simple. It's just a piece of plywood under there. Many people have cargo vans that they convert, and if you like that, that's fantastic. It wouldn't be for me, and neither would a great big honking huge monster RV for me. You get a microwave, storage bin up there, wonderful bathroom. There's my shower curtain. You get a toilet, you get a sink, you get a shower on the ceiling. You have a shower curtain ring because that's your shower. Under sink cabinet. My new wave mini is in there. And you get a sink, very small sink. I usually do my dishes outside in a bucket. And then up here, that's uh, more storage. The normal thing is to use the tables that come with and spin the chairs around and use that for seating and eating. I've done that a couple times, but I'm actually not a huge fan of that. This becomes my uh, where I eat sometimes when I'm not wanting to get eaten up by bugs. And my laptop goes here. And it's basically my, my main seating area. And then this becomes my TV stand. When I'm in this RV, I'm either asleep, sometimes standing and cooking. If I have to cook inside, I cook out as much as I can. And sitting here either doing YouTube videos or watching a movie when it's dark outside. If you have pets and want to take them along, I'll talk about that later. So that was my RV. Use whatever you want. These clips in the back are showing you the flexibility and the good part of a Class B over some of the bigger ones that are out there. There aren't too many van life channels of people doing winter camping. Even though they're well insulated and you can stay nice and warm, a lot of people just don't want to do it, so it's not something worth filming for a lot. And when it gets really hot, that can be tough in your RV too. So the reality is, you don't always get to see what really goes on. And it's not because people are dishonest or anything like that. It's because most people make videos that others want to watch. All right, YouTubers, that's rain. Because, <laughs> you know, I bring the rain. I have stopped here because my front two tires were both about 20 pounds low on air. And that is because I trusted the Dodge dealership when I took it in for an oil change. And they messed up my air pressure. I'm not going to show you much because, you know, there's rain. Well, YouTubers, you can't see much, but I'm just going to tell you, that's way, way, way better. It took me a minute to figure out what might be going on, but uh, way better. I was getting a little bit upset. I thought maybe I spent a lot of money for wheel work and it wasn't right. And then I'm glad I remembered to, like, check my tire pressure. I tend to show rain a lot because newsflash, it rains a lot. Yeah, that's what's going on. <laughs> so the reality check is you got to be prepared and make the best of it. Class B's get better gas mileage. Now, since I make YouTube videos, 
I will admit that I don't watch as many other YouTube videos as I used to because one thing that people don't tell you is it takes a lot of time to make these videos. But some people want to show you that everything's awesome all the time or everything's terrible all the time. The reality is it's life. It's a little bit of both. Sometimes you're in the upper peninsula of Michigan and sometimes you're driving a beautiful road from Key West. A lot of social media people want to point a camera on themselves. I almost never do that. Instead, I like to show you stuff like this and I talk over it. Seven mile bridge. I got a feeling this bridge is seven miles. That means you'll watch a lot of YouTube or social media that shows you, here's what I'm doing. And then there are other channels that show you, like I try to do, is here's what you can do. I personally find nothing more irritating than watching somebody who points a camera at their face the entire time and you're like, move your head, there's cool stuff behind you. So that's how YouTube can be. That's how social media can be. Instagram, for one, would like you to think that everybody you see is a Victoria's Secret supermodel wearing a string bikini. <laughs> That's not real life. Okay, we're leaving Rainbow Falls. And up here on Lake Superior, look at that. That is gorgeous. Nobody behind me. We'll go slow. So this clip is from the North Shore of Lake Superior in Canada. And again, I rather show people the things that they can go see, the amazing things that they can see on their own trips. That's to me what this should all be about. Stunning. I show a lot of time-lapse driving because you drive a lot. I really did enjoy this beautiful drive. Another reality check is van life might alter you a little bit, but it's not going to change who you are as a person. I'm doing 100 kilometers. <laughs> Nobody behind me, so I creeped up. But wow. Wow, wow, wow. That might be Sleeping Giant. They say it looks like laying down I love to drive but I'll be the first one to admit that there are times when you're RVing that driving does get old driving a van is easy but it's still not a car so it takes a little bit more and uh, roads and other drivers will get on your nerves that big maple leaf flying proudly that said, in my videos, I tend to go on probably a little bit too much about roads because I have a 20-year-old RV, and when you drive around the roads worse in America than Canada, you're going to find they're pretty tough on your vehicle. We're not there yet, Benny. I know, dude. I'm not enjoying your company the last 45 minutes or so. And that's pets. We'll talk about it later, but it's not perfect every day, all day. to Eduardo. Person at the roads on my old suspension. It's not terrible, it's just... I got noises. <laughs> It's always funny that some of the road, worst roads are going to campgrounds, you know, and boat ramps. Now, I'm probably exaggerating a little. It's just a 20 year old RV, you know. I've been on worse roads, but this ended up with going to the shop again. I hope I can get campsite. Because <laughs> it's hot again. I'm the never make reservations and it usually works out. This is a sh tough road. And if I didn't have you guys, life would be different. Oh, oh, oh. It's just too hot. 
I'll also admit driving a 20 year old RV, the thought of breakdowns in the middle of nowhere does creep into your mind from time to time. Most vans, you don't have a toad to drive around, so you look for other options. Here's my toad I picked up. This is one of those little motorized scooter things. Just got a little bitty engine in it, but. Pretty quick, actually. YouTubers, that's gonna be awesome. I have learned you can't ride these in Key West or some other places. Those pieces of videos that I'm gonna do that I might edit out because that happens a lot. Sometimes you just you just shoot a video and go realize that's that's even more boring than the stuff I do post. A lot of times people that don't RV wonder what people that RV do. Well, you know, it's not all waterfalls and sunsets and everything. You know, sometimes in my RV, I get bored just like I do at home. I, I suffer from insomnia both at home and in the RV, and sometimes you just do stuff, right, Vinny? And that sort of makes me think of Wedding Crashers. The kid asked him to do a balloon animal, and sometimes that pops in my mind when you're doing YouTube videos because so many people think that you're only supposed to do what they want you to do. You know what I mean? Like, that every video you make should be something that they think is awesome, you know, that, that, that you're programming just to that one person. And when it's actually, Hey, this is what I do. Some of it's cool. Some of it's boring, just like all of our lives and make me a bicycle clown, make the videos I want. I make the videos I make. And you do other boring stuff like realize your door handles loose. See? So much fun and excitement. And don't think that all the boring stuff goes away. It's just normal life. It's just in a smaller space. So, it's cleaning. Um, those of you that are already RV, you know that RVing means you get to do some really cool stuff. And you still get to do the boring shit too. Life is life. Silly shit still needs done. You always gotta keep maintenance in mind and a class B is cheaper. This was my awning that one mysterious wind ripped yeah, right off of there. Because of all that rain. And uh, yeah, ripped it right off of there. At least it's clean now. Eh, could have been worse. Carrying enough tools to fix everything can be rough. Sometimes you just gotta throw it in the RV and take it home. Things break. I've replaced the upper and lower control arms twice in this RV, and not something you want to jack up on the side of the road. All right, YouTubers, this might look a little bit different, because this is what a 99 Leisure Travel looks like when you take everything out of it. There's the water pump. There's the furnace. There's the hot water heater. There's all the electricals on this side. The reason you're seeing this is Class Bs don't leak. I got a leak. <laughs> I believe it's coming from my window. I got a little dampness here and I got to figure out where it's coming from. That's where it is. This is not pretty <laughs> at all. I caulked it all the way around. I'm going to tape it shut. Doing repairs in a Walmart parking lot isn't fun. It's about having the time, tools, and talent. I can't have any more water getting in there. And to be honest, I don't open this window too often. And if it means I have to like seal it shut for 20 bucks as opposed to five six hundred dollars to get it all fixed then i might just seal this shut <laughs> i will go back to my number one reality check for anyone wanting to buy an rv you have to find the one that is going to work for you if you want to have fun and enjoy your travels your only chance really is to do it in a vehicle that works for you we don't all like and want the same things. Pick what's for you. Mushrooms. I wiped them down. I'm going to cut them up. Here's one of my most favorite topics, cooking. I really like to cook. I enjoy cooking, but it's reality check time. My first thought was I was going to cook outside all the time. Oh, the rain's coming good now. But you'll find weather can change that. So a lot of times, the majority of my prep work when I cook gets done inside the RV. For a couple reasons. One main reason, it's just a pain to lug everything you want to chop and prepare outside, so you do it inside. This one's a little complicated, but most of my stuff is really simple because I'm not around the RV all day. 
a lot of people watch the cooking videos and they give a lot of great comments on you should try using this ingredient or whatever and that's cool Fly over we're making burgers but you also find you don't have space in a small rv for all those things Taters. time lapse so the reality becomes you end up using a lot of the same type of things a lot because you have limited storage and refrigerator space in a small van don't, 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 don't. yay <laughs> that is sleet it's, it's wonderful out it's just glorious <laughs> if you're gonna go rv and you just gotta realize this stuff's gonna happen built the fire with my wonderful egg carton homemade fire starter top round steak and this is a little grill thing you know and i'm gonna cook it on that fire once it goes down a little bit while i watch that sunset over that beautiful big lake Gichigumi. So if I can do this without putting it in the fire. I also went in thinking I would do a lot more of this and I'll explain to you why well, I don't. There it is, nothing fancy. Basically it comes down to time. It takes a long time to cook something on a fire or charcoal. I thought I would use a charcoal, but I tend to use my propane grill. Lunch. I also cook big portions. Lots of people comment on that. It's because I don't cook every single day and a lot of times I eat leftovers. Fans, here you go. Now for me, this part's important. This is why I RV. With most sunsets, it's gonna build into something that I think is pretty darn good. So I'll throw in some music and here's your moment of zen. Also, this campground has pretty good views right from your campsite. This is taken out of my bedroom window. The biggest part of RVing is where you wanna go and where you're gonna stay once you get there. A lot of people love to do the Walmart thing or find some place to stealth. For me, that didn't work very well having pets and get into an area late at night and trying to figure out where you can get a little bit of sleep. That can be frustrating. So what I tend to do when I'm planning a trip is I'll scope out possible campgrounds, casinos that I like, stuff like that. And I'll print those out because you can't always trust to have Wi-Fi. And then as I'm traveling, I can pick where I'm going to stay. Beautiful Spanish yeah, moss. That's a decent spot. Can lead to finding a beautiful place in Georgia that you don't even remember. I enjoy sharing calming nature and music. Another place I got to get back to. Perfect example of the RV Credo, north in the summer, south in the winter. Please don't get this reality check wrong. This is a fantastic thing to do, the RV life. And I like winter too. My good Burton gloves. I have a Columbia jacket, good and warm. Good pair of jeans and boots. Check it out. Five minutes is in, I'm a rock. Not everything gets videoed. You get snippets of RVers life. Sometimes you just need to sit and take in a moment, you know, be there, be in it. Being present is a lost art. Said about 45 minutes. Again, my motivation is the nature aspect of it. That's where I'm headed up there. Okay, now I'm going to hit the topic of how real is what you see on social media. Being 100% honest, I think a lot of it is BS. But not on purpose, not by people trying to lie to you. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> oh, it's blowing and it'll be cool. Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. The point comes down to people making content are trying to make videos that are interesting, entertaining, and make you come back. Not everybody makes as boring of videos as I do. When you go RVing or you watch somebody who's solo RVing, 
and you think they're just sitting by themselves all the time, furthest from the truth. you also notice he's not on camera. I didn't interview him. My YouTube channel is not about interviewing people. It's about just going out and showing you what you can do. And now, I'll say have a great and wonderful day, and I'm going to go squeeze something else into the day. I don't know what it is yet. I'll figure it out. Now, I make no claims to be better than anyone else. I just edit in a different way. Now, this was a very easy hike up to the top. Um, there's some steep sections, but there's staircases. A lot of stairs, but there's staircases. That's Hogs back over there. I was just on. A lot of people on, especially YouTube, are using their videos as a way to fund their travels. And there's not one thing wrong with that at all. But... You have to keep in mind that brings you back to the point of creating content that is going to bring people back to watch you again. And there's a sort of trap to that. And you just have to be aware. I have no stones to throw at anyone. A long bike ride to get here. Now I'm going to hike the giant. And now we're walking. And I'll tell you when we start out, this is a pretty good hike. But my content really tends to be about the places I want to go and share. That might be why I don't have a ton of viewers, but it allows me not to have to always consider how much money I'm going to bring in. Take notice of this meadow. You're going to see it again. Tough part is, I think I'm sweating through my bug stuff. I stop moving, they start eating. I'm liking it, but it's a little bit of work. Good for you though. It was like 94 degrees and kind of humid on this day. Woohoo! I don't love heights, but I'm always there. See, me on a selfie stick, I think would just ruin the videos. This is what you're here to see. And the meadow again? So full disclosure, I make enough money off of YouTube for a couple tanks of gas a month. Not a lot of money compared to many others. But hey, a couple tanks of gas a month to get to beautiful places like this way up in Canada. I'm not complaining at all and I get to do my videos my way. There are people out there that take trips to make videos to make money. I'm fortunate that I take trips and oh by the way I make videos. I'm telling you this is stunningly beautiful and a very fast rise in elevation in a short amount of time. It went up pretty quick. This spot's amazing. Words, pictures, videos don't capture this gorge. Who doesn't like heights here? Okay though, I'm not a fan of e-beggars at all. I think when you go RVing, you can do whatever you want. You can go to amazing places like this, or you can sit around your RV. I choose to go see stuff like this. Again with the heights things. straight up honest with you. I tend to find the fancier and more professional a channel is, the further from reality. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the highlight of my entire trip because I had so many great experiences, but this was pretty memorable. This was awesome. Down, I didn't stop and take pictures because I was chatting with somebody. We had an awesome walk back down. I'll admit I sometimes feel guilty if I lag behind on videos. More hikes, riding a bike to get to the hike. I can just wear the host because it says this is easy. Oh, stop long enough to get swarmed. These are meant to be entertainment. So drama sells. This is the perfect utopian existence sells. That isn't reality, but it's entertainment, and that's still fine. I've been doing this for seven years. I haven't been hassled by the cops or any crazies. I've had some near perfect days, some blah days, because you know, like. See the tannins. I've never been in a place where I felt scared, but if you do, you turn the key and leave. It's like superior. And it's a beautiful thing. Now I'm a pretty active person, but I still have some lazy bum days where I just lay around. Don't expect to just start loving things you didn't enjoy before. If you need people, don't go in the middle of the desert and be surprised when you're sad and lonely. Something cool! When I went up to this place last year in Michigan's UP, I was actually really conflicted. 
because obviously there's some bad things about feeding wild bears, but it's legal for this restaurant to do. Now that right there, that excitement of a little kid seeing this, that kind of stirs my optimistic side at a place like this, that maybe people, including some kids, having this interaction they wouldn't normally have, this might stir them to maybe even one day do something that benefits animals. You never know. Again, that's my naive, hopeful side. I also really enjoy sharing on a budget places to eat when I travel. Yeah, I'll feed them. This place is BN and it's awesome. And if a place is awesome, I'll tell you. And if it sucks, I'll tell you that too. And I really enjoy seeing the animals wherever I go. Wildlife is awesome. This is White Street Pier in Key West. If you go to Key West and you don't want crowds, go here. For sunset and sunrise. I'll admit that in my videos, I do my best to edit people out. This is the southernmost point, And if you go there, you're gonna wait a half an hour to get an unobstructed picture. Almost always at least a half an hour. That's a big tarp. Classic, life is too short. In Key West, you can't throw a chicken without hitting an iguana. I gotta tell you, I've wanted to see a moose forever, and it finally happened. Now, full disclosure, I was on the side of the road using my good camera, and this was about 300 yards away. Everybody on the road stops when you see a moose and a little calf coming up. At the start, I thought I would drive constantly and see all I could see, because that's how I always traveled. My reality taught me I like to stay places a little longer and see more of each place. I also never thought I'd repeat places, but I've learned I have found favorite areas deserving multiple trips. If you do this lifestyle, you will also learn, and I can pretty much guarantee you it, that you'll get burnout. It happens to pretty much everybody. Traveling constantly and always on the move gets tiring, both emotionally and just moving all the time can get old. And I thought I would be full-time by now, but I learned that I'm happy to have a house to go back to to decompress and recharge. Now, obviously that does not apply to every single person always, but for the vast majority it does. And RVing's expensive. A class B like mine is a hundred grand and up now. An empty cargo van new is 30 grand. Five or six year old class B's 50, 60 grand. I do the best to do my travels on a budget, but it can still get expensive and it's something you have to consider before you leap in. All right, pet time. I wouldn't travel without him, but it's not always easy. Hey, Van. You guys tired? It's like one o'clock in the morning. I know. I'm still awake. What's the matter, Keek? Oh, look, they're being nice. Don't bite anybody, Vinny. This is a cat actually looking out the window, checking out the scenes. Full disclosure, he can be a little high strung. They're in their tent out by Lake Superior. I like Gichigumi. <laughs> I got the tent because neither of them will do collars and leashes. They just totally freak out. And I think they need to not be cooped up in the small van all the time. So I put them out in this tent when the weather's nice and they seem to enjoy it in my opinion. If you got a cat that won't do a collar, I think this Avo Gear tent is great. Vinny. Van life isn't always as perfect as some people show it, but it's pretty friggin' great. If you're an RVer and you're traveling with pets, it is gonna change how you travel. For me, it makes me always want to find power so that I know they're safe when I go wander. I had one trip pretty early on where I thought the weather was fine and it wasn't too hot, and I could tell when I got back that they were fine, but it had been too hot. So since then, I'm a little paranoid about wanting them safe. And when I do cold weather or winter camping, I don't like running the propane furnace and leaving. I never want to run the generator and leave. And the little Mr. Buddy thing is not a great idea to not be there. So I tend to choose places with power. This is the thrift store screen that I got that my aunt helped sew up. And it does a great job of getting good airflow in there. Getting good ventilation in a Class B isn't always easy, and I won't leave them alone and just wander away like I like to do. People ask a lot of times if I worry about them getting out. Kiki's watching. 
but she hadn't made a bolt for it. And this back door's been open for a few minutes while I put the grill back in. So for the most part, no, they don't try to jump out anymore. Oh, you were at the edge. You were snooping, weren't you? I don't blame you. But I gotta put the grill in, Keek. Stay there. So I talked a lot about keeping my pets safe when I travel, and honestly, it dictates how I travel. But I think overall, if a cat can have a nice day, I think they actually enjoy these trips and they get to see new areas. Not that they seem to really care, but that's what I tell myself. I tell myself that if they're sitting on a dash, they're actually looking at the beautiful fall colors just like I am. This was super long, but I hope it was helpful and great, wonderful day.